Hey, what's going on, guys? Core Ace Designs here, and welcome to part two of my particle rendering video, particle rendering tutorial. So, in part one, if you guys watched it, we created a few effects, um, you know, I don't know, simulation, which goes like this. So, as you can see, that's the simulation going on here. Uh, don't worry about the frame rates right now because my computer is kind of slow and can't play it back in the good way, in a good way. But in today's video, we're going to be creating some particles based on the stream effect simulation, and we're also going to be using we're also going to be rendering those particles using Krakatoa. So, a question that comes that comes into everyone's mind is, what is this Krakatoa? Well, Krakatoa is a rendering engine that that's used for rendering particles and particles only, nothing else. So, first thing you need to do is download that. So, go to the website that this is thingboxsoftware.com. Go to the Downloads tab and download a trial version of the Krakatoa MX 3ds Max Particle Render. Now, this the limitation of this is that it does, does uh, watermark your renders if they're above a certain uh, point, but I'd highly recommend everyone to buy this because it's a really, really great piece of software. Okay, so right in here you can see that we have our simulation there, so we can go ahead and open up the UI. So you must, you guys must be, if you have experimented with this, uh, you must be pretty, uh, you know, comfortable with few effects now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and really quickly play this back for you guys. So as you can see, that's looking really cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try to create some particles. So what we're gonna do is cl click on this Create tab, go to uh, my geometry shapes shapes or geometry um, thing, then go to Particle System and create a PF source. You can create it anywhere in the scene; it does not matter. Okay, so I just created it there. Doesn't really matter. And then what we're going to do is click and while having this selected, go to the Modify tab and click on Particle View. Now for those of you who have, who have never touched particles in 3D Snacks for the entire life, um, let me tell you, this is, this is not really as difficult as this looks because um, you might have tried to do this in, in a previous, in some, some, sometime in the uh, past, but you might have been discouraged because of this complexity, but trust me, it's not that complex. And if you guys don't have an idea about Particle View, I'm just going to tell you something, uh, a short thing or something like that. So what particles are, are basically small meshes, um, and they're created in based on events. So this is event number one, in which we have the birth, the position, the, these are the properties of this event. So like the particles, what they have is they get born in event one. They have, they have the position, speed, rotation, shape, and defined using event one. And then we can have another event in which we have another particle burst, so that we have two bursts at the same time. So I, I'm not sure if I understand if you if I can explain it to you guys in a good way, but um, if you're not comfortable with this, just follow me along, and you should be pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right-click, delete this entire event 001, and instead of that, I'm gonna create a fume effects burst event, and we're gonna be linking this from here to here. So we have a link there, and we're also gonna be you needing theme effects follow in in this so I'm just so I'm just gonna go over everything now. so what theme effects birth does is it create particles creates particles based on the theme effects simulation that you did and what theme effects follow does is uh, if we can if you see here we have some small uh, descriptions theme effects follow operator moves the particles through the grid in the same way it did with smoke and fire so that's pretty self-explanatory and I hope you guys can understand that so now what we're gonna do is go to birth theme effects birth click on this uh, pick object and click our theme effects dialog and then go to theme effects follow and do the same thing so now 3ds max knows that it needs to create this uh, actually this particle system knows that it needs to create particles based on the this particular uh, theme effects simulation so now if you go into display change that from text to dots um, this makes it easier to work with you can see okay if you right you can see that we have some particles going on where the smoke should have been. So if you go ahead and play through that really slowly, you can see that we have some really cool looking particles going on. Pretty cool. So, But the problem is if you try to render this out right now using V-Ray, um, it won't render. I mean, it might. Okay, so that hangs. Okay, so right now, if you do it using V-Ray, you get smoke. But this is not the look we're after. Uh, maybe you are after this look, maybe you are after only the smoke, but I'm not. So what I want really is these kind of glowing particles and all that cool shit so we're gonna change that now in order to do that we need to change our renderer from V-Ray to Krakatoa so how do we do it so it's really simple just go to this Krakatoa menu here click on set Krakatoa as current render 
and you can do it as you to save the previous settings previous render settings you can hit yes or no doesn't really matter i'm just gonna hit yes here and again you're gonna see this crazy looking dialog box open up now this does look really really complex right now but don't worry we're not going to be even using half of these things to create the render that we saw here this one so now if you try to render this out i'm just going to make a good position and then hit render it's just gonna make, take some time to update the particles, but the actual render of Krakatoa is really, really fast. It just takes some time to, uh, you know, update the particles and stuff. So right now you cannot see anything. Now there are two reasons for this. One is because there are no lights, but that's that's that, that's hardly a reason. Uh, and the second reason is we have two little particles. So what we're what we're gonna do is go ahead and select the uh, particle uh, creator, particle source. Click on particle view. And let's go over some settings here. So if we have click on this um, source one, go up. We have some stuff. Uh, we have some stuff here. So we have the logo size and all that sh uh, stuff. We don't really need that. Now we have the viewport percentage, which is which is an extremely important thing and really really useful thing. Now I'm going to be explaining that to you in a while. But first, let's go into Fumex Specs Birth, and we have this. So the emission starts at frame number zero, and the emission stops at frame number thirty. So at frame number 35, the emission stops, and the, the particles that are already there, they just keep on floating around the place. So first thing I'm going to do is take the emit stock to 100. Now why are we taking it to 100? It's because we have 100 frames in our, in our scene, and we want the particles to be emitted at every frame. So we take that to 100. Now rate is pretty much the number of particles in your scene. So right now it's 200, which is pretty, pretty low. I'm going to bump that up to, I don't know, like 100,000. One, two, three. Okay, that that's a million. I'll make it a hundred thousand. Uh, you can take it to a million as well. It doesn't really matter. But for the sake of this tutorial and for, for the sake of fast renderers, renders, I'm gonna do, take it to a uh, hundred thousand. So let's go ahead and try to. Okay, so now you can see that we have a lot of particles. And if you try to move 3D Studio Max, now right now I have just like a hundred thousand particles, so it doesn't really matter too much. But once you once you go into higher number of particles, you're gonna see that the higher particles you go the slower 3ds max is going to get so this is where we go into here and the viewport multiplier comes in handy now right now it's it's as, it's set as 50 percent so it only shows 50 percent of the particles in the viewport so now if you lower this down to something like 0.1 what this, what this is going to do is it's going to show only 0.1 percent of all the particles in the viewport so we have less number of particles and 3ds max is much much smoother we can also lower it down to 0 0.01 or something, uh, depending on how, uh, the number of particles that you have. For example, when I have uh, 1 million particles, I usually uh, bump this down to 0.01%, so 3ds Max is easier to work with. Okay, so forgive me if you didn't understand any of the things. Um, I might have been, I might have gone too fast, but don't worry, don't uh, hesitate to leave a comment in the second comment down below, and I'll be sure to answer that. So let's go ahead and try to render this out now. So it's going to take some time to update the particles. That that's the thing that takes some time. Um, it actually shows up somewhere here, but this is this is blocking it right now, so I can't show you guys. If I try to move it, it's going to hang. So I'm just going to pause this video right now and return when it's done. Okay, okay, so it's done. Anyways, so we have this, and we still cannot see any particles. Now, what the what what's going on? Why why didn't we see any particles? Because if you go into Krakatoa now, we can go ahead and turn on force editive mode and turn on motion blur for the particles and we have that so let's go ahead go into a higher uh, higher frame number and uh, hit render okay so as you can see the render was extremely fast because the particles have, have been cached once so as you can see we have some cool looking blue particles here and the reason they're blue is because um, the particle thing here um, let me open this up for you guys this is blue right now we can change that color if you want to you can make it dark blue or red doesn't really matter but we're gonna be going over that in a minute so if we go take it to red it's gonna make red particles okay so one thing that I'm noticing right away is if you go and look at this um, the particles are much more clearly visible in this than this we have we just have like a big red chunk of mass and the reason that's happening is because the particles are too dense so in order to reduce that we can go ahead and open up the Krakatoa renderer by the way if you close it by mistake you can always open up open it up by going to Krakatoa and bring Krakatoa to front let's open this up 
and we can go ahead and change the den density exponent here. So right now it's 10 to the power minus 1. We can change it to 10 to the power minus 2. And particles are going to be less dense. And of course the render is going to be better. So now as you can see, we can actually make up some particles here. If we decrease the final pass densities even more, something like 1, and then render it out, you can see that the particles are even more visible now. So I'm just going to change it to something like 3 or something. And that's going to do for now. Okay, so right now it's not looking pretty, uh, but uh, trust me, it will in a while. So, okay, let's go ahead and close this for now. Okay, so we have that. Now, um, one question that I am going to get, I know that, is how do I change the color of this and how do I make it, make it look even better? So, if you hit M to create, open up your material editor. And on a new material slot, I'm just going to create a quick material, red material open a particle view and in this I'm just going to go ahead and grab a material static onto this take the material static I'm going to click on that and in here click and drag this material onto this make it an instance make sure hit OK and now hit render so now I, it looks like nothing's changed but actually it's not rendered yet I'm just going to wait for some time so as you can see we have um, we, we didn't notice any change, but trust me, something changed. Okay, so the next question that I am going to get, okay, so if you go ahead and have a look at all this, you can see that the particles well, are looking pretty, pretty darn cool. Okay, so now if you go ahead into particle view, um, yeah, so these are pretty much the basic settings that you need to do in order to create some cool looking particles. Now, one question that I know I'm going to get is how do I change the color of these particles? I mean, in this video, we see that the particles change from red, I mean, uh, it's from orange to green, and then to blue and then to purple or something. How do I do that? Now, the way you do that is by hitting M to open up your material editor and creating an animated material. So we go back to frame number zero, and to make it makes stuff easier for you while working, what you can do is turn off particle emission and particle flow. So this this crashed my system, I guess. Some time, okay. What you can do is go into your PS source and uncheck enable particle emission, and that's going to make it stuff, make stuff easier for you. Now we're going to go ahead and going ahead and creating um, a, an animated material. So we hit N to start auto key, and we have a red material right here. So I don't know, go to frame 30 or something, and then go ahead and change the color of this. So if you see, we have an animated material that goes from red to blue. So you can do the same thing. I'm going to go to 65 or something, and change it to purple or something, and then go to 100 and change it to green, maybe. Okay. So we have an animated material that goes from red to blue to purple and then to green. So. What you want to do next thing is um, click on this particle thing, click on particle view, and we need to do make one last change before we can actually start to start to see that change color, change of color. We need to take this material dynamic and replace material static with it because right now um, particle flow is expecting a static material, but we're giving it an animated material. So we need to tell it that this material is animated. So we can turn up auto key now and click and drag this onto this. Make sure it's an instance, hit OK, and then let's go ahead and start to finalize the render. So I'm going to hit Control c to create a camera from the view, and you can see that this is the camera that we just created. So we can hit P, um, I don't know, C here to, t to see what the camera is looking there. And let's go ahead and go over some settings here. So I'm going to make it uh, 128720, and everything else looks cool. And we can also go ahead and save the file. So make sure we go into Film Effects, uh, Particle Renders, Tutorial. And I'm just going to name it as PRT and save it as a JPEG. Now make sure you save it as a JPEG and not a PNG because if you save it as a PNG, it's, it does not show up in, uh, in the Windows Photo Viewer or After Effects. So that's some kind of bug, I think, because I don't think it can handle PNGs. But JPEG is fine because once you have the JPEG, you can always use. Use, uh, if you want to overlay the particles, you can always use the add mode or something. So that just makes it easier to work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock the camera viewport and hit render. 
so I'm just gonna wait for it to render. Okay, so I'm guessing. Okay, so silly on my part, I forgot to turn on the particles. So chain take this and enable particle emission. Wait for some time to update it. So as you can see there, we can see that we have 36% updated, 39, 41, and just 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 let just let it update for some time. So I'm telling this, so I'm telling you this again. If it takes too long to update, make sure you're going to particle view into geometry and lower down this viewport percentage. I'm going to lower it down to 0 0.01, and that's going to show much less particles here. Okay, and we also have a render render multiplier right below the viewport percentage. So if you want to render, so we all want to render out 100% particles, of course. So uh, yeah, that's that's useful. Okay, so we can close this up now, and we have much lower particles. So let's try to render this out now and uh, over, overwrite the files. So as you can see in in, in there down below, we have 20% updated. So after it updates, it's going to be really fast. Uh, the render thing, the render thing is actually really fast. Uh, the only thing that takes time is the PF source update. So I'm just gonna pause the video and return when it's done. And you can see that it's looking really cool. Okay, so eventually what we're gonna do is go ahead and open, uh, go ahead to different frames, and we're gonna have different colors at different frames depending on the material that we just created. Okay, so there are just a couple of things more that I want to tell you guys before I leave. Is if you go into this particle view, hit particle view. We can actually go ahead and increase the birth number to a 1 million or something and that's going to really give it a much more polished look but of course there, there are going to be 10 times more particles than right now and hence the render is going to be really slow um, I mean the render is not going to be slow the particle updation is going to be really slow so make sure you keep that into account and my computer is really slow right now so I don't want to you know crash it and one more thing that's, that's not actually related to this is but what you should know but it's about the delete operator so if you go ahead and include the delete operator there so what this does is if you have a very long animation some like five to six seconds the emitter will keep on emitting particles throughout this animation so that you reach you'll reach time when there are actually five million or six million particles in your entire scene and that's just going to make everything really slow so that's where the delete particle comes into a delete operator comes into account is what you want to do is we can you can actually define the age of the particle so if we go ahead and do Dubai particle age, the lifespan is going to be like 30 or maybe 60, 50 seconds, 50 frames. So the, each particle is going to be alive for 50 frames. So it's going to be born, it's going to stay there, stay put for 50 frames, and then it's going to, you know, die uh, for, and you know, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it will die after 50 frames with a variation of plus minus 10. So it, it may die after 51 frames or uh, 48 frames or 57 frames. But that's that's just the life of the particle. So that just makes the particle, uh, you know, die. Um, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it the correct way, but yeah, you get the idea basically. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, if you if you went ahead and followed everything that I did, you're gonna end up pretty much with something like this. Um, sorry, um, something of this sorts. And it's, as you, as you saw, it's really really simple to do this. So. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you liked the video, if you have any questions be sure to leave it in the comment section down below, I, I always answer to all questions, or you can send me a personal message, um, any way anyway you wish. So thanks for watching everyone, I hope you liked the video, and uh, yeah, have a nice day.